Hungary's Tokoy, one of the world's most revered wine regions, earned fame for its botrytized sweet wines centuries ago. Noble rot, caused by the fungus Botrytis cinerea, itself is, of course, not unique to Tokoy. But the way it happens is the result of the local terroir and the grape varieties. Fordmint, the region's leading cultivar, ripens fairly late in late September or early October. By that time of the year, nights in the Tokoy region are cool, but days tend to be still warm and sunny. At dawn, thick mist comes from the floodplains of the River Bodrog or the wetlands lying at the bottom of the hills throughout the region. The mist practically inundates the vineyards, bringing lots of moisture that eventually condenses on the skin of the grapes. As berries absorb these water drops, the skin breaks and the fungus, botrytis, which is already on the skin at that point, can penetrate the grapes and perforate the skin, which in turn allows nearly all the water to evaporate, desiccating berries, and thus developing a very high concentration of sugar, acidity, flavours and aromas. To produce an osu wine, these osu berries are picked individually, by hand from the bunches on the vine in a painstakingly slow process, that may involve pickers returning to the same vine five or six times during the harvest, to gather the most concentrated ones from each bunch. Under ideal conditions, a healthy grape becomes a perfectly shriveled and botrytized berry in nine to 12 days, losing around 80% of its total weight in the process. This means some five kilograms of healthy grapes go into every bottle of Osu wine. This and the extremely labor-intensive harvest make the production of Osu wines one of the most expensive in the world. The botrytized grapes are collected for weeks and stored at the winery until maceration in a still grape juice, fermenting grape juice, or a fully fermented finished base wine. Today, the most common choice is fermenting juice. The maceration is necessary because botrytization in Tokoy results in extremely desiccated berries with hardly any juice left, almost like sultanas. And that little juice is so high in sugar that no wine yeast can ferment it into wine. This is how we extract all the flavours and aromas that are concentrated in the grapes. Prior to maceration, botrytized berries are often crushed lightly underfoot to increase the intensity of extraction. After half a day to three days of maceration, the mixture is pressed and the resulting juice is fermented into an osu wine. When fully fermented, osus cannot be released immediately as they need to be aged in the barrel for a minimum of 18 months and may first come to the market in the January of the third year after the harvest. The amount of grape juice the winemaker adds to one unit of botrytized berries influences the concentration and residual sugar in the wine. This is normally indicated on the label by the Putanyash number, six being the sweetest. The word Putan is the name of the wooden harvesting hod that people historically used to measure the botrytized grapes when setting the sweetness of Osu wines. Complex and luxurious wines, Osus offer a sensual sensory journey, an exciting expression of the vintage and of their terroir. They are a true joy to discover. Mm -hmm.